Our first question of the night, we'll get a mic to you there. Interest rates on loans, like 30-year fixed rate loans, lulled along a long time for, to the 70s and 80s and 90s and worked their way down to 3%, 2.5%, something like that. And it took a long time to get there. And then over the last year and a half, two years, they've gone at light speed up to 5 6 7%. And I don't know where they go from there. Do you see them going back to those low levels that are really, I think, unsustainable because they don't, they don't pay a return enough? But, but do you think that they will work their way back down anytime in the near future? Hmm. Short answer, no. Uh, so in some ways, you know, we're getting back to more, quote unquote, normal ranges. I think, it's, I think the, the better way to look at the big history of it all is to say, the two and a half to three and a half was not normal. Yeah. And so we're getting back to something that's more stable and normal for how the, the workings of the housing market, residential market in general work. So yes, if you're, you know, if you were in the market for a house in the eighties, you're still thinking, Hey, 8%, seven and a half percent's not bad. Um, we're not, we're not going to go back to the two and a half anytime soon. I don't see that. I, I see us kind of correcting the the risk of another bubble and and getting to rates that are really long term reasonable um i think what's happening it's interesting when you think about housing and this is a, a tangent from your question on mortgage rates but you know, we've had a a shortage of supply for a decade and so what's happening is with higher rates people that are homeowners that have locked in two and a half percent they're never going to put their house in the market. I'm never going to put my house in the market, at least for a very, very, very long time. <laughs> so it's going to be great. Speaking of investment opportunities, it's great for new home sales, right? Builders that are, you know, building. So there's, this is why what's so exciting about economics, I can get excited about economics, is that right? That's good. There, there's, there's going to be periods that you're going to say, yes, avoid this, but hey, there's opportunities here. So I think with, with the mortgage market where it is, I think it's going to be very interesting and potentially very positive for like a Lennar and a DR Horton, some of those home builders that are going to provide in this period of just undersupply uh, an offset where you're not going to see any existing, hardly any existing home sales coming on the market. Good question. I'll kind of have a follow-up about that. Housing was actually my next question. So when you factor in the mortgage rates, and you said earlier you talked about the gyration going on post-COVID, even though the supply is down, the, the prices have held up really strong. We had that real shoot up in 2021 in home prices. They haven't come back down tremendously. How about affordability for, for, for people who are buying homes and weighing that against where rents have gone, just kind of talk about the housing backdrop in and how that relates to the U.S. economy moving forward. I mean, are people going to be able to afford homes in the future, I guess, is really what I'm asking. Right. So I showed this graph, actually, one of our, our conferences, I think John was, was at, where I show this graph about the units under construction for single-family homes and showing, you know, right, uh, superimposed on that same line, the number of units under construction for five and up unit, multi-unit projects. We've never had more multi-unit family projects being worked on than we've ever had since we've collected the data, hmm. which is great for the millennial group. You know, they're, they're coming into their peak home buying they're going to have a, a challenge if they want a, a single family, you know, home. Um, so the, the, the bottom line to your question about housing affordability, I think once more and more of those multifamily units come online, you're actually going to see a couple things happen. Rents decline and opportunities for those that are actually in the market to buy have, have a, a, a moderation in those units. Moderation in single family, that may be another story. Again, yeah. that's why it's so important to say, okay, there's there, there could be two very different things going on here. That's why it's so important to kind of separate one from the other.